Welcome to Beachcombing Gumbo Limbo Style. My name is Susan Elliott. You may be wondering, how is Beachcombing Gumbo Limbo Style any different from regular beachcombing? Well, we believe that nature gives us so many wonderful benefits that we should always give back. And when we go beachcombing, we come back with much more than beach treasures. Gumbo Limbo is located on a barrier island between the Atlantic Ocean and the Intracoastal Waterway in Boca Raton, Florida, a perfect location to learn about our surrounding habitats, like the ocean, beach, dune, hammock forests, mangroves, and lagoon. We first opened in 1984 as an educational facility for local school children, but over the years we have evolved into a multifunctional facility, attracting visitors from all over the world. Our mission has changed from one of just education to one of action, to inspire stewardship of coastal and marine ecosystems. Research and conservation play a huge part in Gumbo Limbo's daily operations. Let's find out how. We are at beautiful Red Reef Park in Boca Raton, Florida. Boca Raton's beaches are important nesting habitat for threatened and endangered sea turtles, such as the loggerhead, the leatherback, and the green sea turtle. Our conservation staff monitors the beaches daily from March 1st through October 31st, keeping track of all the nests from the time the eggs are laid until the hatchlings emerge and return to the ocean. They track temperature, rainfall, beach conditions, light pollution, predation, and other natural and man-made factors that affect hatchling survival. On Boca's beaches alone, we can have more than a thousand nests per year, so they are very busy. Let's head over to the beach now and see what we can find. Does everybody have their hat, some water, some reef safe sunscreen? It's really hot out there. We don't want to get overheated or sunburned. Let's go. Before we get started on our beach treasure hunt, I always like to go over a few points of beach comber etiquette. Ready? You notice we crossed over the dune on a boardwalk. Dune plants are critical for keeping the dunes in place. During big storms, the dunes protect the island from storm surges. If people were to tromp back and forth over the plants, they would die and the dunes would erode. So, point number one, please do not walk on the dunes. Point number two, do not disturb the sea turtles. If you see the orange stakes and flagging tape that mark a sea turtle nest on the beach, please do not disturb the nest in any way. The third point is never take a living animal from the beach. Sometimes during storms, sea stars, sand dollars, conchs, and other animals may wash up. If something is alive, put it back in the water where it may have a chance to survive. And my last point is something you may never have considered. When we see birds like seagulls or sandpipers on the beach, they're usually looking for food. And I don't mean popcorn or french fries. For every bit of energy they use to run or fly, they must eat that much more food to replace it. So please, when you're on the beach, do not chase or feed the birds that live there. Okay, I've said my piece. Now onward to the treasures. favorite places to explore is along the dune in the dried seaweed. Sometimes we even find things like sea beans. Sea beans are actually seeds from trees and vines that grow in the tropics and find their way into a river or stream which flows into the ocean. Ocean currents, like the Gulf Stream, bring seeds and other treasures to Florida from as far away as South America and Africa. Sea hearts, hamburger beans, and sea purses grow in pods on high climbing jungle vines. When ripe, the pods burst open, spreading the seeds onto the ground below, sometimes into a nearby river. This golf ball sized seed is one of the most commonly found sea beans in Florida and it's called, you guessed it, the golf ball bean. It comes from a tree called the sleeve palm which grows in the American tropics. Another common find is the tropical almond. It is light and corky so it floats easily and can wash all the way up to the dune. 
A local vine called the nicker bean drops pretty little gray seeds called sea pearls. They grow in spiny pods on vines along sunny parts of the dune and edges of hammock forest. Let's walk a little closer to the water. This area is called Rakwa. It's the normal high tide line where the seaweed collects, often interspersed with treasures from the sea. This is another type of sea bean called a sea pencil or a mangrove propagule. This one probably washed into the ocean through the inlet from the intracoastal waterway where mangrove swamps and forests protect the shoreline from storms. If you put a red mangrove seed in a cup of fresh water, brown end down, it will grow leaves and roots and you can grow your own mangrove. Try it. another treasure from far away. It may look like a rock, but it's light as a feather. This is pumice. Pumice comes from volcanoes. When volcanoes erupt, the ash spews into the air and it falls into the cold water. When the hot ash hits the cold water, it solidifies instantly, making this mass. It has little tiny air bubbles in it which allow it to float on the water and the currents bring it all the way up here to the beaches of Florida. You know, they sell this stuff at the store for smoothing off rough skin on your feet and elbows. Why not just get it free here on the beach? Now that's what I'm talking about. The rack line sometimes hides really cool seashells. predators can get through a tough shell like this one, but there is one that I know of, the loggerhead sea turtle. Its jaws are so strong that it can easily crunch through a conch shell to get to the snail inside. So if you find a shell like this one, it's a really cool treasure. You might just have found the remains of a loggerhead's lunch. Conks, whelks, cone snails, and other single-shelled animals are called univalves. Uni meaning one, like unicycle. These sea snails have one foot for moving, a proboscis for sucking up food, two eyes on eye stalks, and a hard protein plate called the operculum for closing themselves into their shells for protection. Some other common univalve shells we find in Florida include the lightning whelk, lettered olive, and tiny Florida auger. Sometimes at low tide, the ocean reveals treasures along the water's edge. Today I see a few of the shells that I like to collect while I'm walking. Look at this beautiful calico scallop. This is one of the two shells this animal makes for protection and for motion. Did you know that scallops can propel themselves through the water to escape hungry predators like sea stars? Scallops, clams, oysters, and other two-shelled sea creatures are called bivalves. Bi as in two, like bicycle. Some of my other favorite bivalve shells to find are the spiny jewel box, turkey wing, and frond oyster. So I said I would share some of my beach combing secrets with you. One of my favorites is low tide. If you come to the beach at the lowest of low tides, before those waves start creeping back up on the sand, you can find all sorts of treasures. Sharks' teeth are all over the ocean floor. Sharks have rows and rows of teeth in their mouths and they are continually falling out and being replaced by new ones. While finding them is not as common on the east coast of Florida as on the west coast, over the years I've found more than a few. 
You just have to be persistent and patient. Good things come to those who wait. Whenever you see a swath of broken shell pieces like this, be on the lookout for shark's teeth. They are about the same size and weight as the broken shells and thereby land in the same areas when the waves wash in. Another treasure you are more likely to find at the low tide line is sea glass. Over the years, glass containers have been thrown into the ocean. They break into pieces and the pieces are washed back and forth and back and forth over the sand, which smooths down the sharp edges and shiny surfaces like, well, sandpaper. These colorful, opaque beauties are sought after by many collectors, but you never know when your lucky day will be. Another good beachcombing tip is watch the weather. After a storm, we find all kinds of unusual things on the beach. The strong surf can carry up large pieces of coral, including soft corals and sea fans, sea sponges, and driftwood. There's nothing like beachcombing after a good old nor'easter. I've gotten my best sea bean hauls after winter storms. This odd looking treasure is a lightning whelk case. Each section holds many tiny whelk babies. If the case is dried out on the beach, it's okay to keep. I would caution you, however, about keeping things like this sponge. When sponge is wet, it's really stinky. So make sure it's completely dried out before you take it home. I'm sure you've all seen it on your beaches too. Marine debris or trash from the ocean can be very dangerous to any life that depends on the ocean, including humans. Many marine turtles, like the sea turtles that nest here on this beach, confuse floating plastic with food and eat it. Sea turtle hatchlings live in floating seaweed offshore. And just look at the amount of plastic in this seaweed. They eat so much that they don't have room in their tiny bellies for real food. If the waves wash this back into the ocean, who knows what will eat it and get sick. We have to do something. We can't just leave it here. Hold on, give us a few minutes. We'll be back to continue our program as soon as we get this cleaned up. Did you know that our lifeguard towers here in Boca Raton keep buckets available for visitors to pick up trash at the beach? So if you find trash like we just did, you can borrow a bucket and clean it up too. The sea turtles will thank you. Plastic kills. There's just no other way to say it. No matter how much plastic you and I pick up, the problem will never get better unless people stop putting more plastic into the oceans and landfills every day. I'm not saying that what we just did didn't make a difference. It did. But in addition to picking up plastic, we can help on the other end as well. You've all heard of the three R's, right? Reduce, reuse, recycle. Well, those are all important, but I would like to introduce you to a fourth R, which stands for refuse. If we refuse to use common conveniences like single-use plastic water bottles, straws, utensils, grocery bags, and choose instead to buy reusable products like the ones shown here sold in our Gumbo Limbo gift store, we are doing our part to keep plastic out of the environment. The ocean really needs our help and I would like to ask you all to join in. So spread the word. Ask your friends if they know what the fourth R is. If they don't, tell them it's refuse single-use plastics. And the next time you are on the beach looking for treasures, when you see trash, you'll know what to do. Every little bit helps. If we all do a little, together we do a lot. Thank you for joining me today. Now it's time for you to get out there and have some fun on the beach. We'd love to see some pictures of your adventure, so go crazy, take some fun selfies, and don't forget to send them to us at Gumbo Limbo. Oh wait, don't forget. Bookmark Gumbo Limbo's website on your phone so you can pull up our handy electronic beachcombers guide to help you identify your treasures. 
And if you can't find your treasure in our guide, email a picture to me through our website, www.gumbolimbo.org. I will try to help you figure out what it is. We can't wait to see you all in person when we reopen, so please keep checking our website for updates. This is Susan Elliott, signing off for now, but for more cool videos and activities, follow us on social media. Bye!